thyroid stimulating hormone. In this video we will discuss TSH, TSH receptors, TSH antibodies and TSH functions. TSH is the most useful marker of thyroid function. A single test of TSH is enough to assess thyroid activity. Increased TSH occurs in hypothyroidism and a decreased TSH occurs in hyperthyroidism. A normal TSH level excludes primary abnormality of the thyroid gland. What next if TSH is abnormal? An abnormal TSH level is an indication for measurement of thyroxine hormone to confirm the diagnosis of hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Once the TSH is found raised or decreased, measure free or unbound hormone level. Unbound hormone T4 confirms the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism but 5% of patients have increased T3. So T3 levels should be measured in patients with suppressed TSH but with normal unbound T4 levels. So again repeating with suppressed TSH but with normal unbound T4 levels measure T3 because T3 thyrotoxicosis occurs in 5% of patients. How about TSH in diffuse goiter? Diffuse goiter Goiter occur in Graves' disease, pituitary adenoma producing TSH and non-toxic diffuse goiter due to iodine deficiency. In Graves' disease diffuse goiter, there is decreased TSH and increased T4. In pituitary adenoma, increased TSH, increased thyroxine. And in non-toxic diffuse goiter, TSH is normal and thyroid functions are normal. Three conditions where TSH cannot assess thyroid function are pituitary tumor producing TSH. Number two, if there there is resistance to thyroid hormone and number three treatment with anti-thyroid drugs. The TSH producing pituitary tumor in that there is increased TSH and increased thyroxine. How about thyroid hormone resistance? In thyroid hormone resistance there is mutation in beta thyroid receptor gene. In that case both unbound thyroid increase and increased TSH. Let's discuss the TSH receptors. TSH is produced by the basophil cells of the pituitary under the control of TRH. Where does it act? It acts on TSH receptor on the basolateral or basal surface of the follicular cells along with sodium iodine symporters. So it binds on the receptors on the basal surface of the thyroid cell opposite the bloodstream and this activates sodium iodine symporters which causes iodine absorption against a concentration gradient from the circulation or capillaries into the follicles. What's unique about TSH structure? It has an alpha and beta chain. The alpha chain is common to glycoprotein hormones whereas beta chain is unique to TSH. What happens if there is mutation in the receptor? If there is a mutation in TSH receptor, it may decrease or increase the function. Decrease in function causes thyroid hypoplasia and congenital hypothyroidism. Or a dominant gain or increase in function leads to hyperthyroidism characterized by coiter, thyroid hyperplasia and autonomous function. And number three cause is drug treatment for hyperthyroidism that causes TSH suppression. TSH remains suppressed for months after treatment with antithyroid drugs for hyperthyroidism. Therefore, it doesn't provide a sensitive index of treatment. When TSH suppression is alleviated, TSH levels can be used to monitor therapy. How about TSH antibodies? The two types of TSH antibodies, TSI, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin and TBI, thyroid bonding inhibitory immunoglobulin. TSI increases the function of thyroid gland, increases the production of thyroid hormone hyperthyroidism. So TSI is increased in Graves disease, whereas TBI is increased in hypothyroidism. TSI stimulates the TSH receptors in Graves disease. It predicts a neonatal thyrotoxicosis caused by high maternal level of TSH in the third trimester of pregnancy. TSI can cross placenta and cause neonatal thyrotoxicosis. Along with TSI in Graves disease, other antibodies that are increased are thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So what are the conditions in which TSH is increased? TRA increases TSH and also cold and a decline in circulating thyroxine hormone increases Increased TSH leads to coiter. TSH is also increased in hypothyroidism and is the most common cause of increase in TSH. TSH is also increased in, in TSH producing pituitary tumor. In that case, as I discussed, TSH cannot assess the thyroid function. And number three, if there is resistance to thyroid hormone. A sudden sustained rise in binding proteins temporarily decreases free thyroxine, which stimulates TSH secretion. So what are the effects of increased TSH? Increased TSH causes cell hypertrophy and hyperplasia 
analgesia, increase weight of thyroid gland, increase activity of the iodide pump to increase iodide trapping, increase blood supply of the thyroid gland and increase thyroid blood flow. So it increases the size of the thyroid gland. So what is the method of choice to accurately determine the thyroid size? Ultrasound is the method of choice to determine the thyroid size and a brew over the gland indicates an increased vascularity. TSH is stimulated by a decrease in circulating thyroid hormone and goiter is produced. So what are the conditions which produce decrease in TSH? A negative feedback inhibition of thyroxine both T4 and T3 inhibit both TRH and TSH. So both T4 and T3 they act on hypothalamus and pituitary to inhibit the secretions of TRH and TSH. Other factors that inhibit the TSH are stress, heat, dopamine, somatostatin and HCG. How is stress, dopamine, somatostatin and HCG decrease TSH. Stress inhibits TSH due to inhibitory action of glucocorticoids on TRH receptor. Number two, dopamine and somatostatin. They act on pituitary to inhibit TSH. So stress inhibit TRH and dopamine and somatostatin inhibit TSH in pituitary. HCG has an activity similar to TSH because alpha chain is similar and HCG can displace TSH from its receptors. So what are the conditions where TSH is reduced? cytotoxicosis and the first trimester of pregnancy where HCG is produced and after treatment with antithyroid drugs in hyperthyroidism and also the drug high doses of glucocorticoids and dopamine decrease TSH.